I'm Scott L. Miller. This is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. I had a lot of videos that I get sent or I watch or just pop up in my feed that are all about, well, you might be surprised, but relocation and different countries that people consider are really good. And I talk to a lot of different people. And in doing this over time, as someone who has put in a lot of effort, and I have a video where I talk about the decision factors that you should consider uh, when you're when you're looking at relocating, but it, as someone who's actually put a lot of effort into this, a large portion of my life and a lot of very focused energy on helping others with moving, with helping my own family decide where to move, I realized there is a trend in how people present their decisions and their, their uh, desired countries that I think is really important for you guys to think about and realize when people are talking that you can look for this pattern and learn a lot about what they're saying and they may not realize it. So we're gonna talk about that right after the bump. So I've come to realize that there are two broad groups of people who are out there providing information about relocation. One group are people like me who have put in a lot of research, been a lot of places, maybe lived there, maybe visited there. Generic expats, great example, someone who's put in many years, travels all over and is interviewing uh, people from different regions and collecting information and uh, putting together a portfolio of information about relocation, retirement and other factors that matter for my audience and similar audiences. So we're one group and I'm not saying that we're all good or bad, but it's important to understand that this is at least what we're pretending to be doing, right? We're, we're trying to collect information so that you know where to go. In some cases, like Generic Expat, he's covering a large area and providing a big block of information about where you might wanna move within that zone. I'm slightly different. I do uh, have some amount of that, but I also have a place in this zone that I've decided to live myself, and I'm providing a lot of information about that, mostly organically, because as I was living here, people started having lots of questions about it, and it started being really popular content, so I just fell into sharing my life and my adventures in being someone who was very intentionally relocating with many years of research and ended up in a place that is less common than some others and have a lot of deep information about it to share. So I kind of ended up with specific information about a country that I moved to and love for very obvious reasons or, or very discreet reasons that I'm able to share with you. So while we have two kind of different ways, he kind of designed a channel around sharing a broad information around Latin America. And I have a channel that was kind of sharing my life and my life became very heavily focused on relocation and, and Nicaragua that I ended up living in so it gets shared in that way. When I'm looking at a lot of channels that are rather than tourist channels, channels of people who have actually put in time being in Nicaragua and are telling information about Nicaragua, they tend to be rather excited about Nicaragua itself. And when doing so, they will say things like the cost of living is very low and then compare it to the region. It's low as a general standard, not just low compared to lower compared to where someone came from, but it's low compared to other potential options. It's not the lowest. As some people have pointed out on my channel a bit, some places like the Philippines are notably lower or Colombia is often at least a tiny bit lower, maybe not notably lower, but when you live there, you will come to realize that it may uh, edge Nicaragua out for the cheapest place in the region. But a lot of, especially Southeast Asia and certainly parts of Africa have Low, lower total cost of living packages than Nicaragua or anywhere in Latin America does. And that's absolutely fine. Cost of living is not the entire uh, way to look at a country. But when we're talking about cost of living here in Nicaragua, we're always raving about how it compares to all of its neighbors, because that's what's important is its comparative cost of living. When people talk about that life is expensive, when people say Nicaragua is expensive, they're always saying, I can't buy enough for little enough money. And what they're saying is that money doesn't go as far as it used to, at least in their perspective. And whether or not that's true is a separate question, but they're not saying that Nicaragua is expensive compared to the rest of the world. They're just saying that the world has gotten expensive and then that Nicaragua isn't an exception to that. Well, that may be true. It may not be true, but it's certainly not useful in any context. There's no reason to point that out other than to complain about the state of money in the world. And I get it. Like if you live in the world, you want your money to go somewhere and get you some things. That's great. Okay. So when you're looking at certain other channels, they have a tendency to uh, be focused on a single country 
Um, and there's, there's, it's what I call the, the Phantom of the Opera effect, right? There's, uh, I pick on people who like Phantom of the Opera, but nearly always when people say they like Phantom of the Opera, the musical, they basically, one, tend to think it's an opera and it's a musical, and two, tend to think that the idea of musicals is something new and novel and that Phantom of the Opera is the one example of it, that it invented it, and that they're unaware that other ones exist. So they tend to be like Phantom of the Opera is so amazing and then you say, oh, wow, you liked it better than Guys and Dolls? You liked it better than Oklahoma? You liked it better than Rent or Les Mis? And they're like, I've never heard of those. And you're like, you haven't even begun to evaluate musicals yet. You don't even know exactly how Broadway works. And that's fine. You can love Phantom of the Opera, but be aware that people who have a broad knowledge of musicals tend to find it rather poor. And people who are looking at it as the one musical that they've experienced, of course, it's that it's a musical that they're going to like. And so when you do the same thing with countries. People who've been to many countries have looked at many options, done lots of research, and have a broad understanding of the world, and then choose a country. They tend to rave about that country and are able to describe exactly why in the context of how it compares to other options. Not every other option. No one can live in every country. There's too many countries. And that's a problem with relocation that we can't have. We have no ability to have a group of, of relocation researchers who've lived in 187 countries and are now giving you a comparison and even if they could live in 187 countries, how long would you expect them to live there to gain enough knowledge to be really useful? Six months? A year? Really, until you've been in most places for more than a year, you may have certain information about how easy it was to get your initial visa, cost of living. There's some really useful information. But certain things like buying a house, buying a car, investing in a business, what you get treated like over long term, how renewals are how things change over time, you need to be there for several years to really be able to start providing that information in one location. If you were going to do that as a comparative, you would need one to five years in 187 countries. That's so many lifetimes. And they wouldn't happen concurrently. They'd happen one after another. By the time you got your third one under your belt, the first one wouldn't be relevant anymore. Everything would have changed. And you'd still have no way to compare. Countries change over time. And so you can't do that. That's just a challenge that we have in the relocation business or mindset, or in my case, influencing uh, a market that we, we have to work with what we have. And But still, there's some people who've been to a lot of countries, tried living there, have a lot of broad experience, and when they do that, they're comparing countries differently, and you can see it in how they talk about countries. They'll be like, oh, you like this in this country? Well, this other country that's known for that, I've done this there, and, and that's my experience. How does it compare? Is it almost as good, just as good? Is it actually better, but a hidden gem? Like, there's all kinds of things, right? When we say that Nicaragua is very, very inexpensive, great cost of living. Ooh, is that compared to Colombia? No, no, no. It's really close to Colombia. It's probably not as good. But no one knows for sure, because everybody's got a slightly different lifestyle, and it will vary. Okay, great. That gives us at least a ballpark of understanding, gives us a framework for understanding. But a lot of people instead do the Phantom of the Opera thing. They, they find that the country that they're in, often the U.S. or Canada, Western Europe, and they say, I'm, I'm tired of how expensive it is. I'm tired of the culture. I'm tired of the stress. It's the place where I worked, and I don't want to continue working there. You name it. And they want to move to a new place. And somebody sells them on the idea of moving to another country. Maybe someone like me. Maybe it's someone who has something to actually sell them. Uh, but they, they get this idea, and then they often go to a handful of really well-known not good for relocation countries, but places that advertise for relocation heavily. They then go to those countries. They evaluate, in most cases, nothing else. In some cases, they're not even aware that relocation options exist across the entire world. It's not uncommon to speak to people in neighboring countries to us here and have them have no idea what the country is next door, that it has easier relocation, lower cost of living, better safety records, things that are often very important to them. They had no idea that they were in a place that was poor for many of those things compared to its surrounding countries rather than good for them because it was portrayed as the one option for relocation. They view it as the option and the idea of comparing other places often doesn't actually occur to people, which may sound to people on my channel completely mind-blowing. You mean people actually think of moving to a new country and they don't even check that there's other options? They don't compare at all? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That actually happens. The majority of the time, it's crazy. And I know some really popular relocation channels up north that, I mean, millions of viewers, 
And yet, and they're providing some very good information about the country they're in, but they have no information or no experience with other countries. So everything is compared to the country they came from, where they were not relocating, where they are not an immigrant. That was their home country. And so that's also very different, that the viewpoint of someone who's only ever been an immigrant once, in many cases, it is their act of being an immigrant or their act of being an expat. That they're, ex that they're expressing. And so a lot of times when I see channels and people are like, why I moved to X country from the United States, the important part is that why it's what they're telling you is why they moved out of the United States. When they say, oh, the cost of living is great. And they're talking about a really expensive country, but it's not as expensive as the United States. And they say, maybe the crime rate is pretty good. Yeah, it's not great. It's not good compared to the other countries in the region, but it's better than the United States. Not in many cases, but in some and so forth. They're doing a comparison to where they came from rather than the comparison to the decision options. And it's super misleading. Now it's useful if you're just trying to motivate yourself to become an expat. You wanna become an immigrant, you wanna emigrate out of your home country, then seeing videos where people talk about how great it has been leaving their home country and going somewhere else. And you can kind of get that brave feeling of like, oh, these people move to another country, I can move to another country. If they can, why can't I? Of course I can, and of course you can. So that part's great. That they're showing you what problems may be existing in your own country that you didn't maybe notice or you didn't really articulate or you didn't realize were unique to there and that by moving out you would simply solve that. So that's one aspect and that's all great. Like break that barrier to where you're ready to just, you're ready to explore, you're ready to research, you're ready to go find out about more places perfect. But then you have to be super careful because so many resources are here. We are someone who is unknowledgeable about the world. Nothing wrong with that, but everyone's got to start somewhere. We showed up in a new country. We really don't know how this compares to everywhere else. We don't know what's normal, what's abnormal. All We don't know which things are because we left our home country, which things are because we're an immigrant, which things are because we chose the specific country we did. They don't know. They don't have that framework for evaluation. And then they're telling you all these great things. It's easy to get swept away. And so often I talk to people who end up making huge investments. And of course, someone who sees that coming is going to race in to try to sell them a house, sell them a car, all kinds of things before they arrive. So that they're locked in, their money is spent, their contracts are signed before they get to that point of realizing that they didn't do that evaluation wow. and realizing that they may have huge benefits if they looked more broadly and stayed flexible. So they're going to do everything they can to lock you in. If you have a conversation where someone's like, oh, you know, I'm really dedicated to this place I went to without research. I mean, I'm buying a house. I already have a real estate agent. Seriously, you have a real estate agent, you're you're letting someone guide you on how to give them your money before you've even been willing to consider that you didn't evaluate the entire country that you're moving to. Seriously, but these are the conversations that we really have on a regular basis. And so don't be surprised and 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 look for this in yourself because it's easy to say, well, I would never let that happen to me. But then to some degree, let it happen to you because the more you think it won't happen to you, eh, there's a certain chance that that is an indicator that it might happen to you. Not always, and especially my channel with the way that I voice opinions and uh, the fact that we're already looking at an uncommon country. Not that many people are willing to consider Nicaragua because it's not one of the handful of official North Americans moved to these country countries. And so you're just by looking at a country that not everyone can pinpoint on a map automatically, that you didn't see an ad for tourism to it, on television, then that makes it that you're a little bit more brave and doing more research and willing to think outside the box. Surprisingly, places that are good for tourism are very rarely good for relocation. The two do not actually go that well together, but most people have a tendency to, to learn about the world via tourism. That kind of makes sense. That should be a little bit obvious, but it's something we don't, again, normally articulate or think about. And so because people generally only understand the world outside of their home or their home country, and it varies. Some people see Florida as like only Disney World and have no idea that it's like a normal state with normal state problems and normal things. And uh, uh, when you're looking abroad, often you see other countries in terms of all-inclusive resorts and in terms of just beaches and forget that they're fully functioning countries with capitals and regional capitals and police forces and their own laws and their own parliament and their own seat at the UN uh, Council and their own assembly and, and their own uh, airports with their own taxes and their own all these things. All these things they are a complete country, just like whatever country you're coming from. They have all those things too. 
and and people often don't realize that and and just don't picture you might get them to say oh yes i know that when they say it but they're not thinking about it and so when they get to those countries they're picturing it in terms of the tourism that they've done and everything's about a never-ending vacation and for some people that is something you're able to pull off and something you actually want but for most people you don't want to actually live in a never-ending vacation you want to actually have something that's your day-to-day -day life that is different from vacation and that you may still want to take a vacation from nothing wrong with that but generally when we're looking at relocation we really want to think about life in very different terms than we want to think about when we're looking at vacations when we're looking at vacations we're looking at generally spending lots of money and always looking for something to do in most cases and when we're looking at our long-term lives for relocation we have to think about how are we going to sit out and enjoy our coffee in the morning that's going to have a bigger impact than say the selection of restaurants down the street of course both are still important but you have to think about am I going to be able to watch TV here am I going to be able to send my emails from here am I going to be able to work or have people come visit me when you're on vacation people don't come visit you not normally but when you live somewhere people visit you all the time it's very different aspects of life being a tourist versus uh, or being on vacation as a tourist versus being an expat who now lives in a location and it is their home so there's two general ideas that I really want to get across on this video. The first is, of course, don't let your vacation time be the driving factor in making decisions about relocation and becoming an expat. Maybe a digital nomad, maybe, but even there, you need to be a little bit careful. And of course, for somebody, how you are a tourist is what you want to do with your full-time life, and this will work for you. But for the majority of people, this is not at all the case. I really do like going to Walt Disney World on vacation. That's a lot of fun. But would I want to live in Disney World? Well, trust me, when I'm in Disney World on vacation, I feel like I want to live there. That seems like a really cool idea. But the moment I step away from it, I go, I no, I don't actually want to do that at all. That's a terrible idea. That would be an awful way to spend every day of my life. It's just neat while you're there, you get swept up in all the things. Everything's focused on convincing you to go to the next ride, check out the next restaurant. It's go, go, go. Because it's a break. It's something different. But you need to think about how those things will apply if they were to apply 365 days of the year, 24 hours a day. Do you really want to be bombarded with Disney all that much? Someone's going to say yes. A bunch of people are going to say yes who aren't really thinking about it. Some people are going to say yes and truly do mean it, but it's not that many. But for the most part, most of you are going to stop and say, uh, no, and name the place, right? Paris, Venice, they're neat to go see. Is that a place you really want to spend all your time? Yeah, 10 million people actually think Paris is a place that they want to spend their time. Maybe some of them have jobs there and that's why, but it's a little bit different. But tourist destinations definitely tend to be quite a bit more expensive and full of activities that you only want to do a very small percentage of your life. If you choose a city just because it has a great museum, for example, here in Leon, we have the largest art museum in all of Central America. Is that a good reason to move here? No, absolutely not. If you're going to be in Leon, it's a great thing to go see. Absolutely. But would you move here just for that? No, of course not. You could live anywhere you want in the world and just fly into Leon, go see the art museum and fly away. It's not a big deal. I'm not gonna move to Madrid because of the Prado. I'm not gonna move to Paris because of the Louvre. Those are things I'm not going to visit more than once or twice in a lifetime, let alone once or twice a year. Not enough to actually drive me to go there. Somebody's gonna be like, no, 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 I like hanging out at the museum. I want it to be a regular part of my life. And at which point, yes, maybe Leon is the right place for you. When I grew up in Western New York, I did become a member of the Genesee Country Museum. It was a huge museum, very interesting. I love that museum. I take my kids there, they love it. It's a fantastic museum, so I get it. I did join a museum and did go regularly when I lived there. But in general, most people are not going to become members of a museum and make it something so important to drive their, their expat decision making, at least not if they're truly thinking about what's important to them. And as you can see, I didn't choose to live anywhere near that museum. If I want to go visit it, I will fly to New York, go spend the day and fly away. It is far cheaper and more pleasant for me to live in paradise, have an absolutely fantastic life, and I can visit that museum very easily. You know, the flight just isn't that big of a deal compared to what it would take to live next to it. So that's a very important way of looking at it. And then the other big thing is thinking about where you want to go rather than the escape, 
yes, it's very important to make the decision that wherever you're from, and if you've watched my videos, I make the comment that in, in some previous videos that I was never going to be happy with the country I grew up in. The fact that it was the United States is ancillary to that. That's where I happen to grow up, but I like the idea of traveling. I like the idea of being an expat. I like the idea of exploring the world through living abroad. And so it doesn't matter where I started. I was always, I think, I believe this, going to want to be an expat somewhere. So uh, that is the first step is understanding that you have a desire to leave the place that you're in. Now, of course, it could be that you really don't like where you are and you want to find a place you're going to like. It could be that extreme. Or it could be like me, where you essentially have long-term wanderlust and really feel a need to get out and explore the world. I came from a beautiful region in western New York. I had no actual reason to leave other than the taxes and the weather and the lack of jobs and future and everything rusting and snow. Okay, I didn't really like it that much, but if, if you know, you don't have to be necessarily fleeing the country that you're coming from, you can just be like, oh, I want some adventure. I want lower cost. I want more freedom. I want better weather. Whatever it is, you can want those things and say, okay, the place that I'm having doesn't deliver what I want, so I want to go. Some people need a certain amount of motivation to get them to say, okay, I'm willing to consider going somewhere. I'm willing to consider moving abroad. That's the, the push, the push away from where you're going from but it's very important once you get past the point where you're willing to say okay i'm gonna i'm gonna live abroad that's cool or i'm willing to consider living abroad that's that's a consideration okay, great but now you need to focus on where you want to go to too many people get distracted by the focus of just deciding to leave and they forget that they have to have a target they have to figure out where they're going. Imagine having a day where you're like, I really need to go shopping. And then you don't even know where you're going. You leave the house, you're just driving around. You're like, oh man, I've got 500 bucks to spend. I just got to throw it out the window somewhere. That doesn't really make sense, right? That doesn't solve anything unless you have a compulsion and then you need to see a therapist. But if, if you're just going out to shop just because money is literally burning a hole in your pocket, that's not how it literally works. It's figuratively burning a hole in your pocket, but to, the, to a much more literal sense than we normally use that expression, you just it doesn't make sense to go out and just buy anything you need to go out with a purpose and you need to buy a thing that's useful for you or that you like and so when you're going out and you're shopping for a new home it's hard to imagine a decision that's much bigger than that in your life to treat it haphazardly where you're like ah just gonna i'm just gonna throw a dart at the map i guess i know why some people do this but mostly it's for travel not for re relocation i'm just gonna throw a dart at a map and if it's a place i've heard of that someone has tried to sell me on i'll just go there Right? It's such a wild approach to something so important. Imagine if you did that with your house, your church, your spouse. Uh, I'm going to marry the eighth person who, who comes through that door. We are going to join the fourth church I see advertised in uh, online. And, um, you know, and then we're going to move to uh, the third country that pops up when I spin a a wheel of fortune style wheel with names on. like like that's my and now my life is being chosen at random that is essentially what people are doing not with all those decisions just with this one but that's how imagine all those things they sound completely insane right no sane person would do any one of those and yet over and over and over again i hear from people and i look on youtube and see these channels where people are just like oh i moved from the us or i moved from canada and i moved from england and i moved to name the place and it's always a handful of maybe six or seven countries that you could predict that people who didn't do their research are going to go to not that they're not lovely countries one of them is spain i love spain it's possibly my favorite country in the world it's fantastic it's an amazing country i lived there for a while of all the places if i had to go back to be pretty happy going back to Spain. So I'm not saying it's a bad choice, even though it's one of those seven places that everybody seems to move to. But when I lived in Spain, when I loved Spain, it wasn't the Spain they're talking about. They're talking about Marbella. They're talking about this very isolated British enclave in the south. Spain is this giant country full of the most amazing things except for the Marbella area, which is a flaming dumpster fire, right? So that's even within like, that's why that works. They're Spain, okay, but they don't mean Spain like people who know how to travel mean Spain. They don't mean people who actually want to live in Spain mean Spain. They mean this enclave. And we get the same thing here in Nicaragua. People say, I'm coming to Nicaragua. I love Nicaragua. And then they end up in San Juan del Sur, which is fine. But like Marbella, it is a very 
enclave little thing that is totally different than the country around it. And we can predict that the people who came here but didn't do their research, and a very few who did, but in general, people who didn't do their research, this is where they end up because they went by what marketing told them, what a sales guy tricked them into, and they didn't bother looking any further because, I don't know, doing research on the country you want to emigrate to seems like too much work? Okay, seriously now, this is where I love that you guys are watching my show, especially after I'm ranting this much and this far into an episode. Like, really, thank you. But I love that you guys watch my show. I love that I'm able to provide advice. I love that you guys can get in the comments and ask me questions, and we have this back and forth. And I do everything I can to make this process clearer and simpler and inform you on things, because not very many of us have really done this and, and been successful at it, especially when you talk to people and it's like, you know, are you really happy with your decision? Well, I'm unwilling to, cons to really evaluate it so... That tells me a lot, right? If you're not willing to go and evaluate your decisions, chances are you know you made a bad one and you don't want to admit it to yourself, or at least you're incredibly fearful that you did, and you're certainly not willing to grow from the educational experience. But the, the reality is, no matter how good my show is, and it's pretty good, I mean, let's admit it, and no matter how much I try to help you altruistically, and I really do, and how much advice I try to give you, at the end of the day, there is no way for me to fully give you all the things you need to make a perfect decision about where you're going to want to emigrate. That is something that is going to take homework on your side because there's some things I can never help you with. There's some places I've never been, for one. There's some places that have changed since I've been there, for two. There's a whole bunch of like, I just stepped off a plane and this place felt right, this place didn't feel right. I thought I liked it warm, but not this warm. The food here is good, but it's not the style I like. Like there's all kinds of things that just come together. And sometimes you need to do your own research. And sometimes it's completely ineffable. I'm watching a video. For example, one of the things I just absolutely love when I see like Lima, Peru, I'm often like, nah, that's an okay city. But when I see the Sacred Valley in Peru, I'm like, oh, I could totally live there. And my eldest daughter, when she saw the Sacred Valley immediately, she was like, that's a place I want to get an apartment and try living there. Right? It just, it hit her. Right. And that's something that's going to happen to you, potentially. You're going to look at a lot of different places in person, on video, whatever, and you're going to evaluate them from a, this place just grabs me. And that sense of happiness or tranquility that you may feel when you find the right place is not something I can help guide you. I will do my best. I can give you advice on how to look for it. I can tell you what to look for. Right? You will feel it when it happens. You will be excited about the place you're going. It's not going to be just... Oh, well, I evaluated a bunch of places, and this one seems like it's okay. It shouldn't be like that. I get that some people just don't get excited about things, but when you find a new home, it should feel like you found home. It shouldn't be like, I was escaping something I hated, and I hate this less. I get that that's better than nothing, but that's a really bad evaluation criteria. You really want to be going... Okay, the place I was wasn't perfect. I'm trying to get closer to perfect, but I don't just want to get away from that. I want to get to good, right? We know what bad has been, and we want to avoid going to worse, because certainly worse is going to be out there. If you have the power to move somewhere else, chances are there's a worse you could be coming from. I don't know which ones are worse, but I bet there's at least 10 to 20 of them that are guaranteed you will hate them so much more than wherever it is you're coming from. So you want to avoid falling into the trap of moving from bad to worse, so you've identified bad, but failing to identify good, and this is, we talk about this, right? I'm a business consultant, I'm a technology consultant, and tons of times trained professionals whose job is to understand how to make good decisions don't understand this, so it's not just you. And, and business people who do this professionally versus this is your one time doing this thing and it's easy to get emotional and caught up in it. But when you're looking at moving, when you're making the big decision, whether it's a business thing, you're buying a new computer, right? So someone's going to go buy a new piece of equipment. You're going to make a new decision on software. And the, you don't just say, well, this is crap, so I want something that's not that crap. Why would you identify the crap? I mean, sure, identify it and say, I'm not going to buy that. That's fine. But what so many people do is they go, okay, this thing's terrible. And then they get something else and they go, it's not as bad as that. And you're like, is it good? I don't care. It's not as bad as that. Why do I care that it's not as bad as that? I'm not going to buy that that I'm not gonna buy that, this is better? Okay, that's not the worst thing in the world, but that doesn't tell me I wanna buy this. It may be the second worst thing. Like, why would you use that as a valuation? Let's start with what does good look like, 
And that's the actual phrase we use. What does good look like? So when you're looking at the right country, stop focusing on what a failure looks like and trying to fail less. Stop trying to fail less. Start trying to succeed, right? This is general decision making. Look for success, not failure avoidance. So determine what good looks like. Good like, oh, okay. All right, all right, I'm thinking about this. For me, good is gonna be a low cost of living. Great, okay, uh, it's gonna be safe. It's gonna be, it's gonna be cold. I need a place that's maybe not snowy, but I need a place that's not hot, okay? Like make that list. What does what a good place look like for you? Okay, put that together, find that place. Find the 10 places that best seem to fit that and then start narrowing it down. Okay, are, are they close in cost of living? Are they close in flights back home? Are they, do they all have equal food? Like what, what sets them apart? Do some research, narrow it down, get out there and try them for sure. But start by determining what a successful determination will look like. And that's gonna give you a far better success than identifying what it doesn't look like and just guessing that the thing you find is good enough because you don't know, right? I don't know what drives people to focus on beating the worst or what is the worst thing they've found so far and instead of finding something very good, right? Oh, I'm in a race. Great, do you wanna win? I'm not really concerned with winning. I'm just gonna look at last place and I'm just gonna to try to beat them. O okay, but are you gonna see what it takes to actually win? No, nope, not, not interested in finding out what, well, I'm gonna consider winning, just not being last. This is a really, really weird, now I understand if you're in a race, you definitely don't wanna be last, but wouldn't it be better to be first, especially if you got something for that, right? Like it isn't just the pride of winning, it's getting a great life, it's getting a lower cost of living, it's getting safety, it's getting happiness, right? You want to determine good and go for that. Use good logical decision-making and think about factors that truly matter for you. We talked about this the other day, focus on real factors, but all of this was because there's so many people out there trying to sell you on these things. There is so much money to be made in relocation services because once you're gonna relocate, people tend to just fork over giant amounts of money that they don't tend to fork over in normal life. And they feel panic, they feel emotion. They're like, oh, if I just get this done, I'll be great. If I just do this, I'll do whatever. And they'll start giving you huge amounts of money. Look at those people. Look at who you, ask yourself, do they actually have experience? Do they have broad experience? Can they evaluate multiple places? Do they represent good decision-making processes? You can't always know, but it's pretty obvious in a lot of cases. You look at people doing relocation and you look at people like generic expats and immediately he starts, well, you know, maybe I don't know everything, but live for all these years here, live for all these years here, interview these people. Do, like he can give you a portfolio for 20 minutes on all the different ways that he's been out there figuring out what good looks like, what bad looks like, what processes look like, how places compare to each other. He's gathering that information and he's not even doing the relocation. He's doing it because he's interested in it. But then you go out and you look at all these people with their relocation services, everybody who made a quick, random, non-decision decision, right? Threw a dart, said it was the first country I showed up in. It seemed better than where I came from. So I evaluated nothing further. And then they start immediately long before they've even figured out the processes themselves, before they have any connections or any knowledge, they're not even passingly knowledgeable of the market. They go, I don't know how to make money now. Well, the one thing I know is how to fleece foreigners because I was a foreigner five days ago. And so they start a fly by night relocation consulting business and, and maybe a real estate business right? Because these are things you can easily charge for outside the country you're in. So even countries that very carefully regulate and tax those things, it can be extremely difficult to catch those people. It may be easy to say, hey, that person's advertising themselves as a real estate agent, but they go, no, I'm not. I mean, it's a billboard. It has my face on it, but it's for my real estate business in another country. And yeah, some countries have the ability to catch that stuff, but most do not. And they also don't care all that much because it's not their problem. If you're doing business with those people, you should know better, right? It should be really painfully obvious that they're running an international scam and that this isn't what legit looks like. It's not what good looks like, right? But they're counting on that they're going to make it very complicated for the government to shut them down and they're going to make it very attractive for you that oh they're going to hold your hand oh they're experts but are they do you have a reason to think that they are no the fact that they're doing real estate or relocation businesses in those countries typically points to the fact that they're not very uh good at being in that country it generally means they didn't come with a way to 
make ends meet. They're now panicking. And instead of coming up with a value service that's different, they're going to do what every generic failed expat does when they get to a country is start a business trying to convince you to fork over lots of money for something ephemeral that they have to do absolutely no work for you in order to earn. That is absolutely, by the textbook, the standard way that they're going to start. So when you're looking at these YouTube channels, a lot of these people are well-meaning, right? I'm not looking, I'm not talking about the scammers who are trying to take your money claiming to be experts. I'm just talking about the people who are excited about the place they ended up. There are so many channels who are like, hey, we're moving into, name the new country, we just arrived in Panama, right? Fill in the blank. We just arrived in Panama. It's fantastic compared to where we came from. So we're super excited because we made this huge life decision. And now we're hoping that people will uh, affirm our decision. They're going to give us this, this, this affirmation. And so they make a YouTube channel, they make a podcast, they get out there and get super excited. And they're like, Panama's great because the weather's awesome. The people are nice. The food is cool. The canal is so interesting. There's so much oceanfront. And they go on and on. And then people listening to it go, oh, you made a great decision. Oh, that's fantastic. Maybe they make some money from YouTube. Maybe they get a little bit famous because they're like, oh, we got the right keywords and it's working. But when you're listening to that, and that's fine, join in their excitement. But be aware, in most cases, listen for it. How did they evaluate the country that they went to? Are they just excited because they got out of the US, they made a big life decision and that's it? Or are they excited because they went through a good process, had a good idea of what good looked like, evaluated a number of places, compared places, made a logical decision, and now that they're there, are feeling that being boots on the ground, it is reaffirming their decision process and that they are now proud of how well their decision process went and they want to share that with you? Or are they just generally excited and want to share that with you? And both are fine. Go watch those videos, enjoy the, the whole energy of the thing, but don't get swept away with people who are just excited and hoping that you can confirm that they made a right decision even though they know you don't know either. Look for people who are actually able to provide you good advice if you're going to try to learn from them. Otherwise, the perspectives that they bring are generally meaningless. They say, this place is so cheap. You can have people who go to Costa Rica and they come from California and they're going to start telling you, oh, we saved so much money moving to Costa Rica. No, they didn't. They threw money away like you wouldn't believe. Now, they may be rich and they don't care that they're throwing money away. That's fine. But you can't say you went to Costa Rica and saved money because comparing to Los Angeles isn't seeing if you saved money. That's not a baseline. We talk about this in finance, right? If you make an investment and it doesn't keep up with a baseline of an index fund, then you lost money. Even if you have more money than when you started, you didn't profit versus the baseline. You made a bad investment. If you move from California to Costa Rica, you are not moving to a low cost location. You're moving to a lower cost location, but you're arbitrarily contriving a bad high cost starting scenario. You could have moved to Iowa and, and saved a ton of money and it saved a ton of money, right? But did you get to someplace cheap? No, you just went to Iowa. It's still super expensive, just not Los Angeles expensive. So if you go to Costa Rica, that's fine. Costa Rica is amazing. You may have things in Costa Rica that you really want and you're willing to pay extra to have them. Great, do so. It's an amazing country with amazing things to offer you. They're just expensive. But don't go to Costa Rica and say, oh, we're, it's so cheap. No, it's not. It's super expensive. It's wildly expensive for the region. By, there's no comparison that you can make where you can say that Costa Rica isn't an expensive location. Cheaper than the U.S.? Yes. Cheaper than Canada? Maybe. But cheap? No. Not by any rational standard. So that kind of evaluation, you have to be very careful because the people will get there. They'll never evaluate anything else. They'll never go anywhere else. And they'll start saying it's so cheap and it's so great and it's so this and that. And you say, oh, against what? What is the comparison list? Now, there's some things they're going to say, I love life here. Great. That's, that's just, it is what it is. You don't really compare that in most cases. But when you start having hard numbers, how much it costs to live, how many restaurants are available, there's like real things you can compare then they need to be compared against things. You need to understand what their, what their comparison set is in order to make uh, a good evaluation of their claimed decision processes. This was kind of a technical talk and we covered a lot of bases and uh, it really just hit me how bad the advice that people are giving and they just don't know, right? It's not like they're trying to mislead you. Okay, yeah, the people selling real estate, the people starting up relocation businesses, they're, they're generally out to get you. Like they know you're not evaluating, so they've got you. I'm not saying they're all like that, just big numbers, good chances. 
but people who are just out there very excited they're making a youtube channel because i see these all the time they're constantly popping up in my feed and they're just so excited about a decision that when you watch it you think they didn't think this through at all they're not aware of anything they may not even know what part of the world they're in in many cases i talk to people they don't even know what the neighboring country that they're just two hours away by car from is like if you don't know where you are on the map you did not do any decision making right you did something random and you got lucky that you're not dead that's it so when i watch these it makes me really worried that other people see them and it makes me upset that this kind of advice is getting out there and it feels kind of legit in some cases but so often it's random oh, i decided to try this place some people are like i'm going to share my story and i'm just excited to do something new fantastic watch those shows give them a thumbs up all the time but when they start giving advice as if they know and you start saying hey what's your basis for being able to make this comparison start being really wary of that stuff because they will uh, generally the average is going to mislead you a lot because the worst places get the most people making the most videos thanks for joining me like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash scott allen miller as always post on social media tell a friend or family member about the show love having you all you guys here get down in those comments ask your questions sends in your video sends in send in your videos uh all the instructions on how to send in a video question are down there it would really be awesome if more people did that some of you are and it's great but more is definitely better when it comes to that a lot more so get doing that i will see all of you tomorrow and your job now your homework click on one of these episodes that has come up on the screen and if one isn't here go find one on youtube also from my list of course and let it play <laughs>